Welcome to the map Fangorn Forest in BFME 1 on the page 2.22. Today we're gonna cast a replay between Isengard and Gondor. Urupid opening versus Blacksmith Farm opening. I'm not a big fan of this opening because you will not have the money to capture the outer settlements um, at the same time. You know, you need to wait eventually. And if you need to make a choice between this farm or this farm, always choose this farm, which will always start with level 2, meaning it will give you more money. So because he opened this way, he will have to wait to buy this settlement for a very long duration. I mean, not a very long duration, but it's like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And again, every second matters. The Urks coming from the top side, soldiers rotating through the bottom side. And Hobbit was not able to get cloaked. And the soldier is hiding, waiting for the second soldier to arrive. Because sending them out for one by one is not really do too much. And the early game should be definitely favoring the Isengard faction because it's easy to defend on this map. You have only two big entrances and you can easily cover both of them with Uruks. And remember, Uruks are way stronger compared to the soldiers and you should be able to damage them big time. And even if you should lose one of your settlements, which I doubt will happen, then you have still three more Lambrimiers, which will give you in total 15% wood bonus, making your structures very cheap and affordable. He was using the Warchan offensively, I like that one. He was able to kill the Hobbit and will be creeping this for yet another settlement. No barracks opening means that your early game as Gondor will be a bit weaker and your mid game is going to be a bit stronger because the stable is coming up very, very quickly on the field. Okay, so in this fight, uh, Crossbow Man will, should actually be kind of bullying the soldiers, no problemo, dealing constant damage from a safe distance. So the soldiers were not able, as mentioned before, to deal any economical damage to the opposite player. I mean, he has only one furnace, but it's gonna be changed. Trust me, that one, you know, he should be filling up the bees very, very quickly. The level two Uruks, the Hobbit was able to grab the farm, that's pretty good. And also Gondor has one, two, three, four, six farms in total. He will get the you know, food bonus of 25% discount for the Knights of Gondor, 560. The Hobbit, they are bringing the Hobbits to Isengard. Pressing the S button and will not be... Uh, he will actually... What? Okay. Ooh, be careful. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, Isengard also creeping this one at the bottom right side. It's a pretty good opening for Isengard, in my opinion. The only downside is that he wasn't able to destroy any farms from his opponent, which will also make Gondor quite rich. So, the early game will lead into a very wealthy mid game for both the players, the Gondor player, but also the Isengard player. So, we will get to see lots of Knights of Gondor on the field. They were able to clean this up at the top side. They are almost level 2. And remember, there are plenty of creeps on this map. So, getting to power points should not be the most difficult task to do. And when you play this as Gondor or as Isengard, outpost control is essential on the map Fangorn Forest. Because there are plenty of them. You have four outposts, two on its side. And controlling the outposts means you control the whole region. Remember, when you buy this outpost, for example, you get a lot of vision control. And that will kind of block the entrance from this side to this side or the other way around. You have Poromir. I like that one, actually. Poromir, pretty good. Very good investment into the lead game, too. In a troll killer. But the troll is punching him on the ground. But oh my god, the troll damage though, kind of nutty. And if you are unlucky, by the way, the troll can keep knocking you down on the ground and eventually end up killing you. But Boro, if he gets the chance to hit you once, you can't fight against them, you know? Okay, the creep at the top side will be taken by Isengard. And here's also Lourdes. Lourdes, a very good investment into the mid to lead game. You want to get him to level 3 ASAP. And this way, he will become the killer of Boromir, just like in the films, you know what I'm saying? Oh, bad trample with the Knights of Condor. Boromir was able to get experience, level 4, and the pikes can't fight against him. This mill will be destroyed. Isengard was able to take a lot of creeps, and after a couple of minutes into the early game, we have Fishy, the Isengard player, sitting on two power points. He has the chance to actually go. And also, the troll was getting killed by Faramir. He can go for the land to cover this land, by the way. That's a possibility. You don't need industry on a map like this in which your eco should be kind of crazy anyway. He's going for the armory. He's going for the industry regardless. I think that's um, an overkill. And I will pro potentially go for the for the Tainted Land here. And cover this maybe, or even put one close to the enemy castle. 
or cover this one. You have plenty of options. The creep was taken by Lourdes, that's good. But he has no more cripple for Faramir. That means Faramir doesn't need to be scared. Um, however, when the cripple is available one more time, Faramir and Boromir are both in danger. And will get one-shotted, <laughs> basically, you know, from Lourdes. Lourdes is very good. But in the meantime, we have a level 6 Boromir over there. He was also able to creep the Trollia at the top side. Boromir is one of the best heroes when it comes to creep a Trollia. And he's also very affordable too. So Faramir is going to do the same. And Gondor plan realizing, okay, with knights exclusively, I cannot win this matchup. So I need to have heroes for combos, you know, so I can make archers later on. And for that reason, he needs Faramir level 5 with his leadership and Boromir level 4 with his leadership. But there comes Lourdes. Lourdes has almost a cripple and Lourdes is faster than Faramir too. The creep was taken by the knights, not by Faramir. Boromir is bullying at the top side. There comes the Horn of Gondor. There is no Orc Horn. <laughs> oh my god, he's moonwalking too. Learn new skills. Okay. I mean, Eisen should have lots of money. But in this game, it's all about 10 point speed. So you want to use the money advantage you got over your opponent to kind of advance as soon as possible. You know what I'm saying? And pressure him. There comes the combo transition, as mentioned before. So he will have to recruit three soldiers, three archers, and then he will have the chance to buy fire arrows to make his combos pretty strong. And remember, Boro is level 7 now. He has double leadership, right? He has this leadership and also the Forgondor, which also only works for 15 seconds. But during these 15 seconds, you're incredibly strong, you know? Oh, Faramir. Oh, he should have left the Kittle on, on, on Lourdes, actually. Getting Lourdes level 5 would be so juice, you know? Paramir, as always, has not been able to show his quality. Gondor player has also lots of money. He might even go for Gandalf if he wants to. Boromir bullying using the for Gondor on himself. And kind of one-man army in there. Aizen has 2.5k, but no outpost control. That's the mistake there. Because getting outputs means more wealthiness and also more space to punish your opponent. So you can go for a siege with a ballista or two, pressure the castle. And as evil against good on a map like this, you always want to bring the fight to them, you know? Combos. Boro is coming. Could use horn, but it won't affect them. They are level 3. Are immune to fear. Lourdes. Not really moving. And knights pressuring or trying to pressure. But there are pikemen with the forge bleeds in heavy armor. So pretty strong. The farm has been taken down. Isengard could easily take this outpost with three furnaces on it. And just never anymore again worry about money. Level 2 lumber mills. They have not been destroyed a single time. And combos are coming. So now the outpost will be purchased by Gondor. And that's the last thing you want when you play Isengard here. Because at the outpost, Gondor will be super strong, right? You have Well, and you have Statue too. And there is no Rain. Not even close to Rain. He's actually far away. But it looks like Gondor doesn't want to get the outpost. And Gondor, by the way, in this situation, wins the fight. Loki can dominate this on land, plus Boromir leadership. There is no chance this Isengard army will win without Saruman leadership and without Lourdes leadership. And this combination of Boromir and Elvin Wood is also stronger compared to the Warchant. But Isengard taking over the map though. With lots of pikemen, take a look into the mini map boys. The map is looking all blue to me. Look at them shining though. Okay, that's gonna be a big fight. Boro is heal, right? Is heal. Full commitment on Boro. He will fight till the end, but the end is near. But there comes the Rohirrim summon. Gondor calls for it, and Rohan will answer into the Elvin Wood. Remember, the Tinderland will be now finally chosen. Lourdes has to be careful, he's frontlining a bit. The Rohirrim are charging into the pikemen though. That's not the best thing you can do. There comes the carnage, but there is no more fight. Lourdes has to bail. And he's only one level away from getting to level 5, you know? 
or one more trample that's a summoned army they will be gone anyway but you just don't want to feed power points regardless so it's going to commit to the level 3 lumber mill will be able to destroy it for the first time into this game and we've also saruman now aizen is getting stronger and stronger but again in order to win this you need to be fast you know you need to siege your opponent asap that's the key to victory Pikeman taking over the map. Paramir, almost level 5. No Gandalf, all game from Gondor. He's kind of not wealthy because no map control. The Rohirrim have not much time remaining anymore. But they are able to destroy this level 2 Lumber Mills besides this one and this one. There comes the Siege Works um, and the Tower and another Siege. Another Warp Pit actually. Okay, three production buildings basically and one defense. Lourdes running down the combos, getting more and more experience. I like it. Get over here. It looks actually funny, to be honest, not gonna lie. <laughs> can they get away? Oof, no, they can't get away. No one can escape from the mighty Lourdes. And he's very close to level 5 too, right? It's a huge power spike for Aizen when he gets there. And with uh, Pikeman feeding power points to Gondor, fighting against the soldiers with, with Forge Bleeds. Faramir, level 5. And remember, now, oh, he never revived his Boromir, by the way. That's the problem. Also very cheap to be revived. The farm here is going to be destroyed. And the siege shall begin. But he also needs to take the own area, because there are too many farms from Gondor for no reason. That's a very strong army though. I mean, kind of damaged army, so you need to bring more reinforcement. But they have almost triple leadership. Lord, Saruman, Warchan combination. And power point wise, Isengard has almost the power points for Freezing Green too. Which means while Isengard's army will have triple leadership on them, Gondor will have no leadership on them. And there are no trebuchet. You know, there is not enough and strong defense to stop what's coming. And now the Ballista started to knock, 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 knock. Who is there, you know? And Aizen taking over the map though. Pretty, pretty solid. The first part of the wall will be breached. Boom. They've breached the wall. And now the second part of the wall will be breached. Uh, Knights of Gondor are trying to commit. But there is a Saruman who can always use Fireball. The Warchant there was not needed by all means. Uh, you want to go in with the Warchant. The Vorks are committing or attempting a sneak attack. But without the Warchant, they are just not strong enough. The second part of the wall has been also broken. Each repaired broken part of the wall will cost the player 2200 to repair. That's a lot of money. And Gondor is slowly losing the map. But there is Gandalf. There is the White Rider. This will be good for something. There comes the fireball from Saruman. Beautiful. But the chunk coming in clutch now from Faramir with the warning arrow. Gandalf has to be careful and avoid this Lourdes at all costs. You know? Remember the Vorchan is on cooldown. Which kind of gives a window possibility for a oh, beautiful Michael with the Knights. Great trample. And they will also be able to survive this. So he's trying to beat the <laughs> cripple because cripple has a maximum range it won't always hit if the target is out of the range so what you can do is try to beat the cripple and then stay at the edge of the of the range and then you leave the range and the cripple will miss the target which will give you know again of the chance and the opportunity to fully commit you now Gandalf is coming. Oof, oof, boom. Okay, two power points versus one or two, but he has the freezing rain. Now that's becoming interesting. The Ballista has been destroyed, but two parts of the wall already broken. However, the army from Aizen is at super, super badly damaged. That comes to Fireball on the Knights of Gondor. Where is the Lords at when I when we need them? I don't see Lord, there is Lord, he's level 5 too. Beautiful blast. What Gandalf can do, I can do as well. That comes to Rohirrim special summon, but riding directly into the pikemen. The combos are going ham. Rain is active, no more leadership. That comes Mifrandia, the white rider. Boom, chakalaka, where is the cripple at? No cripple. Gandalf is unstopped. He got actually two levels out of that, actually. One and a half levels almost. That's kind of crazy. 
And now you need to build. You have nothing that can shoot. Your combos are badly damaged. The trebuchet expansion is doing a good job. Now the heroes are... Oh my god. Bottom is revenge from the films. Bottom is on the hunt. You want to get this... Oh, the bottom here. And the Easter delight to kill the Saruman too. What a fiesta. And not a good way fiesta for Isengard. That will almost eat Boromir. Eagles unlock two power points on top of that as well. I mean, Isengard is the full map though. There is only one farm remaining for Gondor, which also is about to be destroyed. But still, he just fed lots of power points. Before the fight started, Gondor had Rohirrim, Gandalf and two power points. Now he has in total two power points, but he collected six full power points to unlock the Eagles during this fight. Gandalf is getting level 8, Mifrandia. And also, heroes have to be revived, you know. Luckily, Aizen is good eco, right? That's not the problem. Getting wargs up on the field, I like that one. And Gondor is not wealthy, so Gondor will not be able to repair the broken parts of the walls anytime soon. Because he needs the cash, you know, which he doesn't have. It's gonna take you 2 minutes and 30 seconds and um, 2 minutes and 50 seconds. The more levels, the more the punishment. Borrow, Farah, Ganav leadership and level 5 combo. Now, without the Rhin, this army, this combo army from Gondor is also pretty strong in all aspects. Defense and also offense, you know. Ooh, what a horn. Uh, the Wombo combo, baby. You stun them, and I blast them. There comes the lightning sword. I'm a servant of the secret fire. And the siege wars will be destroyed. And Gondor is regaining momentum. And because of the broken, uh, because of the fallen heroes from Isengard, he has not what it takes to contest what's happening right now, you know? There is no need for his combos, because he has no more knights basically right so you need to make always the uruk crossbowman combo which are way more durable compared to the pikeman crossbowman combo the uruk pikeman the uruk and the pikeman crossbowman combo only good against knights but they are horrible against other combos because the pikeman in the front are very very weak you know Eisen is rotating but four power points versus seven so it might be a game in which we will see the full ultimate late game with the two ultimate summons Balrog and also the Offbreakers, the EOD. Speechcraft could be used. Will be used, okay. Okay, so Aizen has finally the outpost at the top side. Also going for the Warp Pit here, towering up for no reason, but it's because he doesn't need the money, actually he has such a great resource income, barely any trees left on the map Fangorn Forest, that's how he's harvesting all these trees, and Saruman is able to do what he couldn't do in the films, which was destroying and burning Fangorn Forest, you know, and the armies will clash now, that's a pretty big army, but quality might beat quantity, okay, Warchant, a nice one, now you can kind of beat, um, this dude could sprint forward. Saruman is faster than combos. The Vorks are committing to the combos, though. That's pretty good. I like that one. But remember, there is Eagles. There is everything available. Rain is available in about 10 seconds, too. But the Horn is coming in clutch so much. What you can do against the Horn... Oh, but the Eagles summon! Both of them are being clumped into one location! Cripple! Okay. Okay. Yanov is gonna be dead, right? Ooh, what? Just kill him. He has heal. The combos are super, super strong though, but they are not focusing enough. He's gonna use heal. Lord has to be getting a bit closer. There is no shot. Bring Lord close a bit. Oh my god. Somebody help him. Oh, he's free. That comes to the steal on the enemy combos from Saruman. The wizard show, by, by the way, boys. The wizard show, but... Ooh, chaka -laka. They are committing fully, and Faramir will be able to show his quality and take down the enemy wizard. And I think Ganav was barely able to survive. No, Ganav actually died anyway. Nine power points in the bank for Gondor. He needs only one more power point for the for the EOD, which he will get after killing all this army. And Isengard got 15 power points. So he needs only five more power points to get 
to his own Balrog. And map control wins. So if your opponent gets Balrog, Balrog without you having any outpost control, you will lose the game. So Gondor has to do something about this. Yes, Gandalf got killed, but I think Gandalf did a great job stopping and stalling. And now he has a level 6 combo with Poro and Farah. And they can create one more time space for Gondor to advance. The outpost here has been taken out, has been taken under control from Gondor with triple blacksmith for the money, which he basically doesn't have. He's kind of broke because of no map control, but the knights are taking care of that. Now double outpost control is the Gondor player realizing, okay, now we reach the lead game uh, momentum in which outpost control can determine the winner out of this game, you know? Outpost destroyed, Eisen is only one more remaining. And again, the same situation pretty much has to wait for Lords and Saruman, but EOD is available and Balrog isn't, okay? Balrog isn't. But remember, evil factions are gaining power points from losing stuff. Look the power points now, as the stuff is getting killed here by the EOD, you almost got a whole power point from losing like one, two combos. The Citadel is getting demolished in a second by the EOD, but they are only dealing damage to Citadel, not to anything else. They are damage against structures, not that great. Only good when it comes to destroy the gate or the citadel. But destroying the citadel means also no more Saruman, no more Lurz. Again, two of the essential heroes, which are the core of the Isengard army. The Vorgs are coming. They are okay. They are like okay. We need to get power points now. Trampling into the combos, but they have the leadership from. Uh, Faramir, they have a lot of armor, you see their damage, their health is not going down that great. The horn, I mean, to be honest, you need to let me know what you think. Who is the MVP of this game? Which hero? Is it Gandalf or is it actually Boromir? The amount of plays Boromir was able to make is kind of nutty. Look, they are fighting around to Valdo, they are regenerating all the time. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! Sharku is no more. And Gondor all of a sudden totally controlling the scheme. I don't know, man. Crazy game. 19 power points, but there is no Lourdes. Ooh. Yanav is going for it, boys. He's going for it. He want to do it. Boom, chakalaka. <laughs> the, the glory of Condor also is a pillage, which makes you gain money for killing stuff. So Boromir, oh, but he has the Balrog of Morgoth. Because no um, ignite, you know, when you ignite, ignite whip, then he will always die. Because he didn't use ignite whip. No cooldown on the flying boy. Fly like a butterfly, stitch like a bean. Bean. Kaboom. So he killed the level 5 combo though, that's pretty good. Gondor has not many oh units remaining, but Gondor in the super lead game doesn't really need too many units. The boom. Okay, half of the base destroyed. And AOD is on cooldown, Lourdes taking care of the knights, but there comes the eagles, I mean you wanna put him into the tower or something, you know. Oh, fireball at least, he's gonna use fireball. Oh! Hold on, I thought, nah, it was... Saruman who got killed and Gandalf will be able to survive the eagles are coming and just like in the films the eagles are saving and Isengard is ditching leaving the game GG well played I think Isengard low-key got the shot to win this game it was looking very good for Isengard but the mistakes couple of mistakes he made cost him the game and also very patient and smart gameplay from Gondor I hope you guys enjoyed this game if you did you know what to do see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.